And what we are doing right now, whether it is in terms of energy efficiency or the use of renewables and so on, that's going to get us part of the way. It's not going to get us all the way. And the idea is what else can we do to reduce emissions? And so the idea here is to go with what we call carbon negative technologies. So think of trees on steroids. That's really what it is. So it is accelerated absorption of CO2, converting that to products. So nature does it, does it very well, but does it slowly. And our basically solution it says, let's see what nature does and do that extremely fast. So instead of years, we want to do that in minutes. Um, and, and the idea is uh, here uh, is really all about uh, developing and commercializing technologies that can absorb CO2 and convert it into useful products. When we started looking at these technologies, we found that they are at different stage of maturity. Some of these technologies are pretty early, meaning they are still in the concept stage. They have not really moved too much, and maybe they, it's even questionable whether it will ever make it. But there are other ideas that have been developed, right? They have been piloted, and some of them are very close to market introduction. So we said, if we are dealing with technologies that will have an impact on the environment and they are at different stages, we have to have a model that basically mirrors that, that can handle, that can deal with technologies that are early stage and late stage. So what we have done is we have created two platforms within the Global CO2 Initiative. The first platform deals with early stage technologies. And this is done as a non-profit, meaning there are grants, and, but if they're successful, then some of the returns basically will be recycled, will be reinvested within this non-profit. So the first organization is called CO2 Sciences. It is a non-profit, 501-3C organization, and grants, uh, funding to early stage technologies, universities, and, 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 and early stage companies in order to help them commercialize their products. That's one. Then we have a second vehicle, which is a commercialization vehicle. It's a for-profit vehicle that basically takes companies that are at a late stage of development. They're very close to market introduction. They need the last push. And then we prepare basically for uh, funding them and getting them to the market. If you look at, 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 at how, how this can be done, you'll see that actually the people uh, where the funding is going to come from, it will be different, whether it is on the nonprofit side or on the for-profit side. So we have to engage multiple stakeholders to enable us to do what we want to do. So, um, the first product that we are going to invest in is uh, making cement. Okay. So think about cement and concrete and how much is produced. It is probably the, com the material that, the, that has the highest amount of any, any other material that man makes, basically. Um, it, just that, that part, that just these products contribute over 7% of the global emission of CO2. We have identified a company that produces cement and concrete at a carbon footprint 70% less than what's currently done. So imagine what we can do with this. So if we can replace everything that we are doing right now with this new type of cement material, we will reduce the emissions the global emissions by 5%, which is significant. What we are set out to do is we said we want to reduce carbon emissions by 10% a year. That's really our, our, our objective. And we think that just by adopting one technology 
uh, we will be able to reduce it by, by half, as much, half of, of our target. Uh, we think this is going to be a, a big winner because not only it reduces emissions, but in addition to that, it is lower in price. So there is going to be very little resistance uh, because consumers don't have to pay more for it. The companies ca that currently make the cement can make exactly the same thing with very minor changes to their process. And we end up with a product, similar properties, uh, uh, but it is at, at a lower cost. So we think market penetration is, is, is going to be quite, quite fast. So today it is in the final stages of qualification. As you know, as, as in when we're using any kind of product, there are standards that they have to meet, right? Whether it is in terms of mechanical properties or corrosion resistance or anything of that sort. Uh, so this company has been going through this qualification process for over two years. We think that within six months or so, they should be ready to go to the market. We believe that the first commercial introduction will be late 2017. So what we have done is we said, how do we know that we really can achieve this? So we have conducted a, a market assessment study that's really, really comprehensive. It's done by the world leading uh, consulting mm -hmm. group, uh, which is based here. Uh, That's and the McKinsey uh, study. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so basically what they have done is they, we said, look anywhere where we can convert CO2 into useful products. But we have basically some screens, some characteristics that they have to have. So any one of these things, they have to have a minimum impact of 0.1 gigaton. If it cannot reach 0.1 gigaton, don't include it. That's, that's one. The second thing is that it has the chance of being commercially viable. If it does not, then, then uh, that's not going to be the case. And also, it, it has to be a market, a big market, so that we can invite investors and they see the value. So when they have done this, they have looked at seven categories of materials, ranging from uh, construction materials to uh, fuels, chemicals, plastics, uh, even some, some food products and agricultural products. If you add up all of these things, we end up with very close to four gigaton a year by 2030. Mm -hmm. so, so not everything is ready today. You know, some of this needs nurturing, needs development, and that's why we have the nonprofit, because we think if this is absolutely needed to go from where we are today to, to where we can be. In terms of what's done today, it's extremely small. It's, it's, it's 200, uh, 200 uh, million tons, which is, which is extremely, extremely small given the huge, I mean, the, you know, the 35 that only will increase gigaton that we are, that we are emitting today. So as I said, to be successful, we really need to have multiple stakeholders. So we're talking to governments, and we're talking to foundations, we're talking to corporations, we're talking to institutional investors and individuals as well. Mm -hmm. So these are the five categories of stakeholders that, that, that we are talking to. And um, for the nonprofit, Governments put money in that because obviously they don't want to give you money that you can generate um, benefit for yourself. That's that's not mm -hmm. the case. So for the nonprofit, we're looking uh, for governments from uh, money from governments, foundations, philanthropic money that goes into there, as 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 well as corporations that want to see the next generation of technologies developed. On the for-profit, we're looking again for corporations because that's their business, institutional investors or individual investors that, that, that want to do this. To date, we have over 50 million uh, committed and this uh, came from uh, corporations, it came from foundations and it came from individuals. 
We don't have any funding yet from governments, but we are working on that. So we don't think it's easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think uh, this is a very tough problem. Uh, so, so I come with you know, over 30 years of experience in, in the chemical and energy industry where I have worked on developing, developing products. And I know what, what the uh, time cycle is, I know what the amount of money and resources that have to go into this. So, so we have big plans, but at the same time, we think we are grounded in reality mm -hmm. because the team who's doing this has done a lot in the past, whether it is in technology commercialization, development, investment, business creation. I mean, so we have all of these covered within, within our team members. So, so if you think about it, uh, we're asking for a billion dollar, and people may think this is big. Actually, it is not big. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very small in an industry that, that, uh, that basically it's, it's, a, it's in the trillions of, of dollars, right? So if you look at, so this is a good question because people lots of times don't see really how, how the process go. And you're right, the first step is, is how to capture this. Where we're going to start is where it is very easy to do so. So if you go to uh, power plants, it is mixed, CO2 is mixed with other things. The concentration can be anywhere between three and 12%, maybe 13%, but that's, that's about it. Mm -hmm. However, if you go to different places uh, in a refinery where hydrogen is generated using, using something called methane uh, reforming, when you do that, you generate CO2, pure CO2 that's just emitted. We think there is 100, 200 million tons of that that we can, we can go to. The second area is uh, when you look at how biofuels are made when you ferment basically these, uh, the biomass and you end up with ethanol that is used in, in, in biofuels. As a byproduct, you get a stream which is 100% CO2. So you don't have to concentrate, you don't have to purify, it's there, right? So we think we, you really need to be smart about wh wh where do you want to do this. So, so we're going to go after concentrated, high quality, resources first because cost ca ca we capture cost is very small and in this case it's probably less than twenty dollars a ton so it's, it's not really it, it's not prohibitive uh, but at the same time because we will be working with people in the steel industry where they have on site that basically that co2 where we don't have to transport we don't have to pipe in then it makes a lot of sense basically to use that directly uh, I was on a board of a company uh, until a few months ago that basically sits on a cement plant. It's co-located with a cement plant. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they just take this uh, basically flue gases and pipe it in into their, their reactors and they make products out, out of this. And this is done now at a commercial scale. We think that we need every viable solution to be part of the total answer that, that we're looking for. So CCS or carbon capture and, 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 and sequestration is one part of the answer. Mm -hmm. It has struggled in the past because it is costly and it is, there are no revenue resource sources, right? I mean, you just, you're paying money to do something. You're doing it out of compliance which is okay, it is part of, of the, the whole solution. The advantage of the CCS is the huge amount that it can use in one shot. Uh, CCU, which is carbon capture and utilization, uh, it has the advantage that uh, you can generate revenue, so you can invite investors who can do good and do well at the same time, right? So do good for the environment and do well for in, in, in terms of uh, financial returns. So we think that these, these things can, can go hand in hand. Uh, 
And the way that we are positioning ourselves is really not as a carbon neutralization because in the past people thought that uh, these things are not doable. Instead, what we are saying is we are creating a marketplace for CO2 based products. So uh, look at everything that's around you, whether it is the, the, the clothes or foam that is used in, in, a, in a mattress or plastic that's used in, 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 in your phone, whatever, any, any one of these things. Uh, basically, these plastics are used today and all we're doing is replacing the feedstock from X to CO2. And then we're addressing this to people who are, who are in the production today so we don't have to worry about um, new uh, market channels, uh, developing value chains, um, customer acceptance. I mean, all of these things we can bypass by basically uh, positioning this as it should be, which is an, an industry that produces the same materials but with the advantage of lower carbon footprint overall.